Eric said the, the podcast was corny. I already said the podcast was was a dumpster fire. We know that. Anybody who watched any of it knows it was it was it was it was rough. It was rough. We know that. I wish it would have been moderated better. I don't know how many other people were gonna be there. I didn't know the format. There's, there's all kinds of things that, that that could could go better. But it all becomes Bruce Lawn. One of the best resources I always point to people all the time is this conversation, which I'll probably be reacting to it. It's a conversation between James White and Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman is an agnostic who once a part of time was a Christian, and now he is a, a, a critic of the Christian faith. He says he's not a Christian anymore because Jesus was a failed apocalyptic prophet. Why am I talking about this? Well, because this is a great this is a great resource, right? Um, it's moderated well, but there are parts that are messy, there are parts that are contentious, and there are parts that Bart Ehrman sounds coherent on, though I think overall his position is incoherent. When it comes to scripture. And I think James White does a better job articulating his points of view. Why am I talking about this? I believe today that when we are dealing with these opposing ideologies, opposing ideas, opposing views, opposing religions, opposing dogmas, that it is good to go into environments that are hostile and to have conversations that are that are tense and uncomfortable so that people can hear both sides and come to their own conclusions about both sides. Living in this reality of social media, YouTube, Instagram, podcasting, all of these different things. It's ironic that some people would say, well, going on a podcast like whatever is not the same as debating Bart Ehrman. And I would say, why? That's on YouTube. Dr. James White has a YouTube channel. People are building audiences online because this is the new marketplace of ideas now. This is exactly where these conversations are happening now, is on YouTube, online, through podcasts. And so I, I have no idea why any of us, but me in particular, I speak for myself, I can't speak for you guys, would act like going on a podcast is somehow beneath us, would act like going on a podcast is somehow something that we would not do, even if we got to be the little bit of light in a dark room. And I think if you watch the overall conversation, which fair enough was a dumpster fire, okay, is better than there being no light. I think being a little bit of light and planting seeds is better than fleeing the marketplace and fleeing from the cities and fleeing from the conversation and fleeing from the mark uh, from where the YouTubes and the Instagrams and the TikToks because we're we're scared. And and here's what I'm also uh, not going to do. In the same way that some of you guys might hear this conversation and find out that the New Testament is not the literal words of God, the way some of you guys have been raised to believe, and it might cause you to question some things that you're not thinking about yet, right? In the same way that that might happen is in the same way that some people are going to go on that conversation and see me on a platform, and they may feel the same way. Oh, I... I my gosh, there's an OnlyFans model. Oh, 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 they're talking about hooking up. They're talking about adult stuff. Adult, As if these conversations aren't happening and you're not aware of them. As if we don't talk about those here on the stream. As if we don't address these things from a biblical worldview. Why? Because the moment the church flees from these conversations and doesn't engage in these conversations, I think is the moment the enemy takes ground. And so... I just think it's it's just it's just a ridiculous view to say one content and evangelism are mutually exclusive because you would never dare say that to someone like James White who goes and debates people, Muslims, all types of people. And and two that you being exposed to something that you already know is out there that we tell you guys all the time that we talk about adult content all the time. You really not knowing who Adam 22 is who what with the whatever podcast is that that's somehow going to to cause people to stumble. I just think it's a it's a disingenuous position. Now, if you disagree with the move, cool man, respect, right? But I'm I've just never been in a position where like I, I'm gonna act like some people are beneath me. I think that's that's a lot of the critique the world has about Christians, and I, I I'm never gonna be that guy, right? And there's also what happens behind the scenes. There's also the relationships that get built behind the scenes, the conversations that happen behind the scenes, the ongoing text threads that happen because of these conversations, the, the, the seeds that continue to get planted, right? And so if you don't want to go into these places, cool, respect. 
But as far as me and 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 what we're doing here, and as far as Lila and this, the amazing work she's doing, I think personally, I think this is a huge net positive. Huge net positive. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to go and watch the whole podcast if you're not equipped to watch the whole podcast. Just like in the same way, you don't need to go watch the whole debate about sexual critic criticism and understand everything about how we got our Bible if you're not ready to have that conversation. If, if that might cause a, a crisis of faith to you, right? You have to know where, where you are with your maturity. And so this idea that Christian leaders have to walk on eggshells in terms of who they who will and won't engage with because somebody somewhere hypothetically may have a lustful thought, I just... I just think is a bit ridiculous. And I don't think that's how we, we, we make ground. I don't think that's how we persuade. I don't think that's how we lean into these things. And so th that would be my thought. Now, uh, Eric said the, the podcast was corny. I already said the podcast was, was a dumpster fire. We know that. Anybody who watched any of it knows it was, it was, it was, it was rough. It was rough, right? We know that. I wish it would have been moderated better. I don't know how many other people were going to be there. I didn't know the format. There's, there's all kinds of things that, that, that could, could go better. But it all becomes a risk and reward. There's 5,000 people that are watching live. We read scripture on the podcast. I shared the gospel on the podcast multiple times. There was, I believe, ground made in some aspects. Um, and, and, I, and I believe just, I mean, just is my opinion, looking at the body language, that there was some conviction that happened. There was some conviction that happened. Um, and so, like, I, I am not above being in an awkward situation in, in, a, in a cringy format for the sake of planting seeds and attempting to make headway with people. That's just that's just where I'm at. That doesn't mean you got to do it. That doesn't mean you got to do it. That's just where I'm at. Like, I, I'm okay with that. And and if that somehow uh, you don't like it, cool, man. That's fine. But I think to, to, to ignore the scriptures of Jesus being around sinners to the point where they called him a glutton and a friend of tax collectors— that he hangs out with prostitutes. That was literally what they were talking about, right? I think we're, we're seeing pretty clear-cut examples of Jesus and the disciples and the apostles immersing themselves in uncomfortable situations that are cringy, right? That, that, that are cringy. And so that, that, that will be my position. Is this something I'm going to do all the time? No, it's exhausting. The entire process was exhausting, okay? It was a four-hour drive. A four-hour drive to Santa Barbara. Then getting there and, and, and waiting to start. And then it was another four-hour conversation. And then it was another four-hour drive back. No, this isn't something I plan to do all the time. But when the opportunities present themselves and when we're operating in good faith and people want to have good conversations and, and we're prayerfully approaching these things, we're not just flippantly. We I've been talking to the Whatever Podcast for a while. Lila's been trying to get me on there to go on there with her. She's been wanting to do more stuff together. I, I'm going to approach these things cautiously, but I'm going to approach these things with the hope to win people over and plant seeds at, at the least, right? Hey, this is a segment from our daily after party stream. Consider partnering with us online for as little as $5 a month to get access to these daily after party streams completely unedited. You'll also get access to our podcast as they are streamed live into the community before anyone else gets to see them, get to interact with our guests, get access to our private Discord server, and a discount code for our store for as little as $5 a month. Ultimately, that will help towards helping us continue contextualizing the gospel using media and podcast here on YouTube. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.